Welcome to another episode of Life Off Road. This week's feature is a throwback to 1966. Like I said, uh, this is an F100. Going a little old school for this edition. Every now and then we're gonna have throwback features, but uh, I wanted to bring my good friend Brad back to uh, come in and tell us about this beautiful truck. Brad? John, it's good. It's, it's good. Good, to you, good to have you back over here, man. I'm, yes, I'm excited about this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm yes, sir. You were, you know. Yeah, this is my baby right here. <laughs> All right, so tell us what we have here. This is uh, we have a 1966 uh, F100 custom cab. Um, I, I tried to keep it as much original as I uh, as I could, but I kind of wanted kind of change the drivetrain up a little bit. But this truck uh, means a lot to me. It was my grandfather's truck, All and right. uh, Matter of fact, I'm 56 and uh, he died in 1978 at, at the age of 56. Wow, so wow, okay. I learned how to drive on this truck and uh, it's been in my family uh, uh, for quite a while. It was his and then my dad's kind of swapped it around between my brothers a little bit and now I have it. Wow, wow, beautiful, beautiful. Now your, your dad, were all those four guys, I think uh, you mentioned that they all worked at the dealership or whatnot? Or? Yeah, my grandfather, he was a technician. Back then they were called grease monkeys, I guess. <laughs> and right. uh, But he always worked at the dealership and my dad worked at the dealership uh, while he was in college there for, uh, for a little while. Okay. Now, how long did it actually take you to restore it? This is, I mean, this looks right. like it's off the showroom floor, yeah. folks. I mean, this thing is just, I mean, seeing it on camera does it no justice. You really have to be right. here to see it in person. And this just looks like a, a hell of a project. So how, how long did it actually take you? It actually took me five years. Uh, okay. Dad gave me the truck. Uh, I kind of been trying to talk him out of it. It was pretty beat up in really bad shape. It wasn't running when Dad gave it to me. I talked him into giving it to me. He gave it to me about 2002, 2003, somewhere in there. It sat in the garage for about eight years. Mm. And uh, I remember the day and uh, New Year's Eve, uh, January of uh, uh, 2010, my son walked by the garage and said, Hey, Dad, when are we going to start on that truck? Uh -huh. I kind of scratched my head and I was like, We're going to start today. We hey. pushed it out of the garage and got started on it. it. took me five years after that. We finished it up May of 2015. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, was this the original color of the truck or did you paint it? Was it a different color from back it, then? Or? Uh, it was actually Wilmington White. Um, if, you, if you have that Wilmington White truck beside it, uh, you'll notice that this one is just a shade darker. Um, we like the, uh, my wife and I, we like the, uh, to, you know, the little darker color. So it's pretty darn close. If, if you don't have the vehicle sitting side by side, you never know the difference. Okay. Now on the interior, uh, was that a lot of work as far as replacing the carpet and, and well, all that? Or? It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, one of the Lucky things we came up with the interior. There's actually a company in Oregon that reproduces the original material for uh, a lot of the old school vehicles, uh, even back in the 30s and 40s and 50s. So we were actually able to outsource the material and get the original material that the seat was made out of. Oh, okay. And uh, it actually came with a rubber mat. I was able to um, get the original mat mm -hmm. that was in it, so we opted to go back with some carpet in it. Nice. And it looks like you just kept everything just to its original format as far as steering wheel and the yes, radio and yeah I wanted everything to look original on the inside the way it looked when he was driving the right, vehicle. Right, right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's uh, have a look at the uh, engine. Yeah, sure. Alright, so engine now th what did these originally come with the uh, uh this one originally came with a 352 in it with automatic transmission that's what the custom uh cabs came with uh most of the four trucks a lot of them came with inline sixes in them three speeds on the column that's right that's yeah, right yeah. yeah okay and around horsepower wise probably back then that was probably barely maybe 150 or so just for yeah actually they advertised this model at 208 it okay. was 352 horsepower or 352 uh, cubic inches i'm sorry but 208 horsepower mm -hmm. um really not a lot of power so mm -hmm. uh we kind of uh changed a few things up uh it's actually running a 445 now uh, stroker motor oh uh, we took a 390 block yeah we took a 390 block stroke it to a 445 but I still wanted it look old school right okay so we had a few tricks up our sleeve that we did to you know leave it old school look and uh, for one we wanted to uh, keep the original air cleaner mm -hmm. they had an oil bath oil cleaner and we 
we took that one and uh, gutted the insides out and put a paper element in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we took an Elder Brock uh, intake, uh, aluminum intake, you know, a set of aluminum heads, we poured and polished those. Mm. Um, the Ford, the original Ford intake looks uh, very similar to the Elder Brock intake, so we okay. had all the El uh, uh, Elder Brock logos machined off, and um, uh, so it would look original. Okay. Uh, when we did that, we also changed it over to a roller motor. We run a roller cam, roller rockers. Okay. And we actually ran a half inch spacer on the uh, bottom of the valve covers to uh, so we can run the original valve covers, so nice. it would look all all original. Nice. Now, is that a, a Holly carburetor, four barrel, or? Yeah, it's a Holly uh, okay. 780. 780, okay. Yeah, 780. And um, uh, I don't know if you ever were very familiar with a lot of these trucks, but uh, uh, they didn't have fan shroud on them. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a suicide mission when you uh, were sticking your hand in there <laughs> where, if you were yeah. tweaking on the engine a little bit while it was running. So Man. Uh, so we actually put a fan shroud off uh, 72. Uh, forward uh, okay. on the radiator, uh, kind of protect your hands uh, on there. So, yeah, it pretty much looks OEM in there. But there's a few things we've changed up. Yeah. So, about how much power do you think it's making now, horsepower range? Uh, we dynoed this one at 524. Wow. So, it uh, it scoot on out pretty good. Yeah. In a pickup truck with nothing in the rear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make a lot of noise. You don't go anywhere fast too much. <laughs> sometimes. Man, that's a lot of power. Especially looking at this mm. this engine, you would pop the hood. People think, "Oh, you has got 208 horsepower. That's right. cute." Right. And then you mat it to the floor, and yeah. you know, embarrass a lot of folks. I'm sure it is fun to drive. Uh, another thing, these trucks came. They came with uh, you. You found a few with power steering and power brakes, but not many. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually pulled the front end out from underneath the 74 model. We got the power brakes off of it okay. uh, and the power steering uh, uh, unit out from underneath it. Okay. Uh, these school or these trucks originally came with drum brakes on the front. Mm -hmm. It was like flipping a coin, you know, whether you're going to go left or right, right. You know, when you, if you had to hit the brakes in emergency conditions. Right. So we have disc brakes on the front of it uh, off the 74 model now. Okay. Uh, anything between 66 and the 79 model, you can actually pull the whole front end out from underneath them and it's interchangeable. Uh, they'll they'll slide right in. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm sure the handling and all that, once y'all did that, that probably tweaked the handling a little bit. Yeah, it, it helped the braking uh, tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, it still drives, it still has you know, all the 66 suspension up underneath the front of it or the 74, whichever one you want to. It, but it, it still drives like a 66 or a 74 model. It's not anything like any of the late models now. Yeah. Well, let's see how this thing drives. I'm very, very excited to get to drive this thing. So, <laughs> well, let's go, let's for, go a for a ride. ride. So, this is a uh, three speed or four speed auto? Yeah, C6. Okay. Uh, it originally came with a uh, cruise matic transmission in it, and uh, they were uh, two speeds. I ended up putting a th uh, C6 in it because you really couldn't find any parts for the cruise matic anymore. And I couldn't get a torque converter at the correct speed that I needed. Right. So that's one of the reasons I ended up uh, putting a C6 in it. Oh. It's just a kind of a temporary thing right now. I'm going to put an AOD in it, uh, electronic uh, AOD in it. Okay. And I'm going to change the gears up. Probably run me a 3000 uh, lockup converter in it. Okay. It feels very strong. <laughs> just, just, just off the rip. Woo! She likes to breathe, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. She's definitely healthy. Man. It's got to be cool to have one in it original you know you're talking about something from all the way down from your grandfather to your right. dad to this i mean that's got to be just so cool yeah that i've had several people ask me uh if it was for sale and uh, uh john i don't think i'd take any amount of money um, um, for this vehicle right um, uh, like i said i lost my grandfather when he was 56 and, and you know how granddads are they yeah. just uh 
their special place in your heart for them and yeah. uh, because they're later on in their career and they don't have a lot of responsibilities they have a lot of time to be able to hang out with you and him right. and I we were always together uh, if we weren't in the garden you know messing around you know he'd come down and go fishing in the creek with us or, and uh, I ended up learning how to drive on this uh, truck um, back in the late 70s and uh, early 80s there really wasn't a lot out here in this area as far as population was concerned. He told me to run up to the store and pick up some, you know, something for him up in town and I didn't even have my driver's license yet. Yeah. And he'd say, stay on the dirt road. <laughs> you know, about my grandfather I loved, you know, he worked at the Ford dealer up there uh, in town, um, you know, back in the 60s and, and everything, 70s. And uh, I remember grandmother telling me one time after he had passed away, somebody approached her and and uh, uh, gave her some money, and, and this, she asked what the, you know, that was for. Right. She said, well, uh, you know, we had our car up at the shop, and, uh, and we didn't have the money to get the parts for it. And uh, your husband paid for the parts, wow. fixed our car, wow. and, and we haven't, you know, paid him back yet. Wow. But he was just, he was a godly man, right. just loved everybody. Uh, always had a smile on his face so truck means a lot to me so about five years to restore this thing huh so yeah it took it took me about five years to do it um i'm kind of really particular about how i want things done yeah and uh, so i really wanted to do it myself i had the knowledge and i had the capability time was a little uh one of the things i really didn't have a lot right but, uh, you know working all the hours that we do at work right but uh I pretty much worked on it every night I got off work, mm. most all day uh, Saturday and uh, about a half day on Sunday after church I'd, okay. I'd get out there. And it's really hard to uh, do a project like that if you don't have a good wife, you yeah. know, that's, uh, you know, that will let you participate in those <laughs> right. activities. And, uh, so that's a lot of man hours yeah. doing that, so I can imagine some, probably yeah. a few every now and then tough conversations, you know, yeah. probably. Yeah. But. Actually, it wasn't too. It wasn't too bad. She knew how much the truck meant to me, right. and I've been talking about it for years. Right. And, uh, and she uh, she really let me uh, uh, let me get out there and, and get it done. My son came out and helped a lot, and she would come down and help occasionally. Okay. Uh, you know as well. And uh, I have pictures of my son out sitting on the top of the engine block as we're uh, uh, putting the roller rockers and everything on. Mm -hmm. He's out there helping. He was little then too. God, uh, bet. Pull up in the car show in this thing, man. I'm <laughs> sure it's just definitely a a head turner. Yeah, you know, you know, I have the Celine too, and yeah. you know, lots of times we'll take both of them to a, to an event, and uh, if they're side by side, nobody looks at the Celine. <laughs> I was uh, going to ask yeah. you, does this draw a lot more attention than the Celine does? I, I yeah. could probably imagine. So. Yeah, this draws a whole lot more attention, yeah. uh, uh, especially the older generation. They kind of oh, yeah. they kind of gather around it, uh, pretty good deal. Yeah, but it it it, it collects a, uh, a crowd usually, or draws a crowd usually. Yeah, and uh, get a lot of thumbs up out on the out on the highway. Yeah, I bet. Kind of startles you because everybody's blowing the horn at you all the time. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, you know, you think you pull down in front of somebody, right. but they're, they're giving you a thumbs up. Yeah. A big smile on their face uh, uh, when they see you. Yes, yes, they're, they're American racing. And, and since it was a truck, I still wanted some sidewalls on my tires. Uh, you know, I didn't want I didn't want the real skinny tires on my truck. I love them on the car, but I didn't want to do that on, right. on my truck. I wanted to have some sidewalls on it. Right. Yeah, I don't like the, you know, I don't like the, the, the smaller tires. On the front, I kind of like to have a little bit of meat, right. you know, as I'm going going down the road. Boy, this this thing, the torque on this thing, man. I mean, it's it's definitely strong. Just a couple other little small mods that we did uh, uh, in the build is. I cut an inch and a half out of the frame up front. We pulled the front bumper back in a little bit tighter against the grill. Um, you also don't hear any fuel sloshing around in the cab. Go ahead. I took the fuel tank out, 
and uh, we put that in the back between frame rails. Okay. Uh, How big is your, your gas tank? Uh, it's 22 gallons. Okay. Uh, we used the uh, 70 Mustang tank. Oh, it, okay. it worked out um, really well. It, it fit right in between the frame rails perfect. Okay. So, and uh, that was also the biggest tank I could find. You know, that's kind of an OEM tank. Right. You notice anything different in the in the cab of this truck that you don't see in the 1960 something truck in the cab? Well, staring in here, one thing I I probably would just think was probably abnormal is the, the the cup holder. Did you add that in here or? Yeah, that's yeah. just sitting on the carpet. You know, right there. We just mm. need, needed a little cup holder there. What? What you see above the cup holder? This this unit here. Yeah. Tall. That's, that's air conditioning. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's, a, uh, that's one of the old Ford units that came in the Mustangs. I was uh, going to ask, was that originally, I couldn't tell if it was originally belonged in here or not. No, I mean, the, it, looks, uh, it looks so, I mean, it just blends yeah. in very well with it, though. Yeah, there was no such thing as air conditioning in a, in a Ford pickup back then. Yeah. And um, actually, a gentleman came in, he had bought a new Mustang uh, at the dealership, and uh, this uh, uh, Ford unit had been added to his Mustang and, and he wanted it removed so my grandfather took it out for him and put it in his <laughs> truck so uh, wow. uh, it's, it's got nice cold AC and it will run you out of here too. I believe it. I believe it. We're not going to turn it on today ladies and gentlemen because it's a little, little chilly day here in the ATL. Probably about 50, 55 degrees in here but uh you still have to ride with the windows down. You know, you gotta, you gotta listen to the engine just more. I just love the original look in here. You know, just the old school, the gauges. I mean, it's just, it's just plain and right. simple. That's one of the things I've always, uh, as far as my taste in vehicles, I like to have everything look original on the outside and the inside. Right. And if we're gonna change anything up, I wanna change it in the drive line and the suspension. Uh, you know, make it run faster and handle better. Right. But as far as, uh, as far as the way it looks, I really like to leave things the way the original uh, engineer or designer right. uh, designs the vehicle. I mean, even the, the headliner in here, I mean, this is just, just screams, right. you know, old school. Well, that's one of the things about the interior I was very really for really fortunate about. There's a lot of uh, aftermarket companies that, uh, you know, reproduce uh, uh, everything. Um, the uh, headliner actually came from uh, Dennis Carpenter. I believe he's in North Carolina. They re reproduce a lot of the old Ford uh, parts. Um, and like I said earlier, we could, uh, uh, the company out of Oregon, uh, I believe it's called SMS, mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of the original uh, material or upholstery for, you know, older vehicles. Uh, if you're looking for some OEM material, mm -hmm. so you can get it back exactly like it looked, uh, you know, when they produced the they car. Produce it, yeah. mm -hmm. But the headliners, uh, they reproduce those, the padded dash, uh, the instrument cluster, um, steering wheel, um, the seats, uh, you, can, you can even get the door panels, the sun visors, you can pretty much get uh, uh, all the things you need to redo the interior. Yeah, it's original, yeah. We're just cruising in 66 Ford. It's no big deal. No. <laughs> oh man, that's fun. <laughs> man, you might have to let me borrow this thing for a weekend, man. This, <laughs> this thing here. Woo! You, uh, you gonna give up the Chevy for the weekend? We can probably, we can, we can, we can do a train. We can do a train. We can probably do a spot. You know, we can probably do a spot. There's only one. This attracts old men, not young women. All right. Absolutely stunning, man. You did a hell of a job with this thing. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm, I'm glad. I, you always talk, like even with the Celine, you always talked about this truck and you always you know, showed me the process of you, you know, doing everything. Right. And then to finally just see it all just come together and and then doing this and just, I mean, this, it just gets no bad. It really makes you appreciate the craftsmanship and everything. Just well, how the car is supposed to be done. You know, it's kind of crazy. Before I even started this project, uh, me and my wife, we would always go to all the car shows and everything, and right. just look at all the Fords and Chevys and everything. And you never saw a Ford fixed up. They were mm. always GM products, right? Uh, whether it's GMC, uh, GMC or Chevy truck or whatever. But mm. you never saw a Ford redone. I guess just about the time I finished this in 2015, you really started seeing a lot of Fords uh, uh, pop up at the car shows and everything that had been restored. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did, because seeing this thing, man, and driving it on me, I'm sure a lot of people are just like, man, it probably motivates a lot of people, too, to finish whatever project they work on. Because I know a lot of people get burned out of doing projects, because it, it is a lot of work and time and, and effort, and, you know, you get burned out in it easily. But over the, you know, course of the last, uh, I guess, five or ten years, uh, you know, from the time I started the truck, I've really made a lot of good friends uh, that have, you know, been redoing their own, their forwards and things, and, and it's it really neat meeting a lot of different people from all different walks of life. I right. That's all the, always the beauty of, you know, the car shows. You know, you meet so you meet so many different people from all young genres and. Uh, Everybody's so nice. Everybody's just, you know, they're in the same thing you're in, whether, like you said before, it's a Ford, Chevy, or Dodge, or whatever. But, you know, everybody just has that one common thing in common is, you know, the love for cars and just the storage behind it. I don't know if you notice well, while you're going down the road here, but it's pretty quiet in the cab, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. That's yeah. with the windows down. I mean, it's no no wind noise or, or anything. Let's just pop the window yeah. up. That was, Man, that yeah. Was, yeah, that was one of my goals when I uh, built the truck is I didn't want that drone in the cab. Yeah. When you're going down the road at, say, 55 or 60 miles an hour that a Flowmaster may have. So, yeah. Uh, we actually run in uh, long tube headers with two and a half inch exhaust out the back. But okay. I stuck with a Dynamax muffler. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to try to keep it as quiet as I could. But uh, if you shower down on it and you're standing outside, uh, you'll hear the pipes rumble pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to hear it inside the cab when I uh, when I was running down the road. I guess I'm getting a little old. Yeah, there's no drone in here absolutely at all. Man, oh man. <laughs> As you can tell by the grin on my face that this was an absolute treat, man. This was a, uh, this is what you call the old school, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I mean, this thing rides great. You feel like you're just in the old school, just really old school NASCAR. They didn't even race NASCAR trucks back then, but if they did, they would probably be probably set up like this one. So again, I want to thank my buddy Brad. Yes, sir. Allow us to come back over here and uh, take his pride and enjoy your granddaddy would be proud of you, man. You well, did a, well, you thank did a you, hell thank of a job you. on this thing, you know, and uh, it's very, very nice. It was very honor to uh, be able to drive it. So, uh, that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll see you next week.